All right. Um, good morning. This is the December 13th Bicycle Pedestrian Subcommittee meeting of the Transportation and um, Parking Committee. Um, we've got um, a quorum of members between present and um, online. So we're going to go ahead and start. Um, hey, Brett. <clears throat> yeah. Of course, you remember. <laughs> um, so we'll start with public comment. If anybody um, has a public comment that's uh, for something that's not on the agenda. Um, ben, I see your hand up. Hopefully you're parked. You can unmute. <laughs> I am. I'm safely parked at work. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? For goodness sakes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. So, um, so yeah, I just had a couple things I was hoping to mention. Um, you know, first of which, just being, uh, I was just so happy to see um, the support that the Main Street redesign um, received from city officials, the city council, various groups in town, people writing letters. Uh, it was just wonderful to see. So I just wanted to thank everybody who played a part in that. Uh, uh, really important. And um, yeah, so so there's that. So I guess you know um, I had a couple of questions, I guess, or and and things I wanted to mention. Um, the first one just being um, wondering if there's any progress about um, acquiring equipment for snow removal, ice removal on the um, on the bike paths and. I know uh, I've been watching some past meetings, and I think it, um, as far as a year ago, um, that was a topic that came up. So I'm really hoping that um, there's been some progress made there, um, in no small part because so much of the criticism that came out about the Main Street redesign were people saying that, the, you know, how are they going to remove snow? How are they going to remove ice? you know, what's going to happen. And, um, and at a meeting that I was watching even more recently, like last June, I know Donna uh, mentioned that that equipment was still something that needed to be a acquired. Um, so I'm just wondering what the timeline is and what the goals are as far as that, um, making sure we have that equipment to demonstrate that this is something the city's serious about. And um, yeah, you know, um, and I don't want to take up too much time. The only other questions I had was sort of an update on Valley Bike. Um, and then I've also been sort of a couple more things. Okay, if I keep going? Yep, keep going. Yeah? Oh, okay. As long okay. as it's... So, um, so, uh, so a couple other things. Um, been seeing conversations about Locust Street getting redone. Love to see separated bike lanes there. I think that would be um, much more inviting for um, everybody to get between the high school, Smith Folk, Florence Center. Um, and so I think that'd be a great way to address speed and safety on that stretch of road. Um, the other thing I was going to ask about, um, uh, because it came up, um, with the group that was sort of interested in maybe an alternate vision for a downtown redesign. Um, you know, if separated bike lanes could be a part of the plan, um, going up Crafts Avenue and down old, down old, down Crafts, up Old South. Because um, I think, you know, being able to provide access from the rail trail makes sense. And, you know, it'd certainly be a way to, um listen to what some people had to say about maybe what downtown could look like and i think um in some ways it, it makes sense to consider something like that and maybe that could be wrapped into the project as well so thank you that's i'll mute myself that's enough thank you benjamin um elena hi good morning everyone um my i had a quick public comment um and mainly, a, I guess, a question for DPW um, around um, 
trail cleanup. Um, so I know in the past I've seen on the trail several times throughout the year, um, some sort of equipment that is blowing debris off the trail. Um, and I know we had several floods this summer and, um, just with leaf fall leaves falling and fall and whatnot. Um, I just noticed that the trail hadn't been cleaned, um, in quite a while. And I was just curious if DPW, I know y'all have been busy with flooding and other crisis crises around the city, but I'm curious if um, there's plans to clear the trail before the first snow, you know, significant snowfall, um, especially thinking about biking on the trail when it rains or when there's any sort of moisture, those leaves are super slick um, and this can be pretty dangerous for, um, for cyclists and walkers. Um, so just wondering if, why it hasn't been cleaned this season um, and if it there's has. plans to do so. Elena, I think it was cleared last Thursday. At least I saw some parts of it being cleared by the blower. Oh, cool. I I was on the trail yesterday and segments of it weren't clear. <laughs> so maybe they're they're working on it. I don't know. That's good to hear though. Great. Great. Thanks, Elena. Um, anybody present with public comment? Yeah, but just one real quick question. David Ames from Kingston. Um and this may have been discussed in the past. On um, if you're riding down King Street towards Main Street, um, you you have access to a bike path on the side of the road, which is great. But then it, at Wright Street, where um, uh, the um, coffee roasters, right there, the bike path <clears throat> ends. And I was just wondering if there's any plan to continue that on to Main Street because I think it stops right there. Um, and like on, oh. on Pleasant Street as well, where you you do have a bike path up until um, probably the uh, train station. And then after that, it basically blanks out and you're thrown into a road. So I was just, you know, maybe this has been discussed in the past, but is there a plan to sort of continue at least having signs in the street that would, you know, indicate that bike riders are also present. Um, yeah, so just those two sections. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I don't see any other public comment. So I think the first regular item on the agenda is to go over the uh, text language um, for the proposed temporary signs and uh, movable signs um, that FNT had um, proposed that they could um, place on the bike path in different locations. And so I sent around the, the text that was sent from um, Freeman. So I can um, screen share those um, if you wanna go over those and um, talk about that. Can everyone see the screen out in Zoom world? Okay, great. So I I think um, these were the nine. So Freeman, feel free to um, speak up here and talk about if there is any plan that um, uh, in particular about how many of each of these signs or if it's just intended to have one of each and sort of the program that you're thinking of. Yeah, I think um, there are a couple of things I could say about this. <clears throat> One is, you know, important to note that this is uh, imagined as temporary, you know, not something that will be a permanent fix. So it's a step in the direction of having, you know, clear signs. It's something that's simple that that FNT feels that we can do and move about. Um, the idea is to have, you know, four or five simple phrases something that somebody on a bike <clears throat> would be able to read as they're going by. <clears throat> so nothing terribly complex. Um, and um, and that signs would be moved. You know, we'd move them to, to different locations at different times so that you wouldn't have to be in, in uh, you know, you wouldn't just see the sign if uh, on your section of the trail, the same sign over and over again. So that's another piece of this. Um, and, uh, I think one of the 
the things that we'd really like to see is at least one sign with with uh, the QR code for the city ordinance around the, the rail trail uh, or the shared use trail um, uh, and the speed limit also. That th those feel like in the most important or some of the more important <laughs> elements to include. Okay, great, thanks. Um, I would just say that I think the trail speed one is um, needs to be clarified because that's only for e-assist bikes. And um, I think that either that should be located, put on that sign or um, somehow modified. And then the I don't know how others feel about if you regularly bike more than 12 miles an hour, you should be on city streets. Um, I think that language is a little bit strong and e e exclusionary because some people I think feel safer on the um, paths and we don't have a speed limit of 12 miles per hour other than for e-assist bikes. So those, that would be my comment, my opening salvo <laughs> to this conversation. <laughs> Go ahead. I agree. I had the same. I had the same two thoughts. Okay. Yeah. But, but thank you for all of this. I I am um, I'm a very regular uh, cyclist and and runner and pedestrian and uh, Nordic skier uh, and roller skier on the rail trail. I think all of these would be helpful. I would welcome all of them. I think they all make sense uh, with the two comments that Carolyn already made. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I I'm not sure how necessary number five is. I haven't heard a lot of complaints about what is this trying to address? And uh, yeah, I, I just, I'm not sure about that one, but the rest look great. And I think in some ways having fewer signs makes them more powerful, possibly. Fewer messages. Fewer messages means that they're clearer, maybe. Thank you. Um. So, so, Ca Carolyn, it, it um, am I am I understanding correctly that the when George, I think George must have talked with you about the this uh, the pedal issue, uh, mm -hmm. was about um, uh, wheeled um, vehicles that have throttles rather than pedals. Is I think wasn't that the gist of that? That was the concern. Yes. Um, I think that, he, that for the impetus of that language for that language was, um, yeah, that that sort of gets at the motorized, the fully motorized vehicles that are on the trail. But aren't there already it... signs? Yeah. Okay. So this would just be an additional. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Anybody else on the committee have comments um, before I go to other members of the public? Okay. Um, Elena. Awesome, thanks. Uh, thanks, Freeman, for pulling this together. I tend to agree about the um, 12 miles per hour. I think one, a lot of e-assist bikes don't have a speedometer, so they don't know how fast they're going. Um, so I don't really, I mean, like maybe it's like signaling they should go slower too. I tend to agree that we shouldn't push folks onto the city streets because we have limited to no safe bike infrastructure in the city. Um, and then I wonder um, if, like, I appreciate how short um, these messages are. Um, because you are going and moving past them. So you want to be able to read them quickly. Um, but I, I wonder if there's, um, I guess, flexibility or thinking around adding one or two words to some of them. For example, the first one, maybe say announce yourself when passing. I'm not sure everyone would fully understand announce when passing um, if they aren't frequent trail users or aren't, um, you know, used to using the, whatever, not used to using the trail. Um, same with the city ordinance, like which city ordinance? So maybe like rail trail city ordinance or something, a descriptor there. Um, 
and then I wonder if there's an opportunity to put some graphics on these. I'm just thinking of people who either can't read or um, English um, isn't their first language or you know don't read English. Um, so I'm just thinking like putting an icon of like a leashed dog or a 12 mile per hour speed limit sign. Um, and, and I don't think all of them, you know, it would be tough to, without a graphic designer, tough to add, um, icons to all of these. Um, but that's just a suggestion and you can take it or leave it. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Um, Actually, as we we're going through this, I was just thinking about um, number two, and I thought about this before, but I, I don't know why I didn't say anything. Oh. The stay in your lane. Um, um, perhaps it should be stay to the right or something, um, as opposed to lane, since there aren't any marked lanes. Um, but that could be a graphic, too. <laughs> um, yeah. Or keep right except to pass. Yeah. I like moving away from stay in your lane because that also has other connotations. Don't be up at <laughs> Point. Be normal. <laughs> <laughs> uh Nick. Yeah, I, I I like that um idea of the moving to the keep right except to pass um, for all the reasons that um, uh, people have said. Great, thanks. Um, uh, ben, Spencer? Hey, ben? Um, I was, hello. Um, I was just gonna suggest along the same lines, like all users keep right. Um, because so often, you know, there's uh, people walking on the path that occupy the whole width of the path. And um, and so that's another way to sort of make it clear that this doesn't just apply to cyclists, but um, everybody who's using the path. That's it. Including the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks. Um Okay, any other comments um, about this before we move on? And do people feel comfortable with the language now? I think this was the last sort of step before sending FNT off to the printers. Have we reached a conclusion about number five and uh, number six and, and eight? Um, no, would you like to make a motion? <laughs> uh, I guess I'm still not completely clear. I think five is confusing enough or, or uh, nuanced enough that it might be too complicated for this uh, this m form of messaging. So I guess I would propose that we, yeah, I, I guess I would move that we not use number five uh, unless people want to argue about that and, and convince us or maybe reword it for clarity but uh, I would argue I would I'll propose that we not include number five or uh, number six um I don't I, do we have a second for that I second that Nick did you have a comment or were you seconding I would. Uh, I'm. I, I'm fine. I have a comment um, at this point. Th th those sound eminently reasonable to me, um, and uh, the the only other suggestion I might make, um, besides what we have, what I would propose is the keep right except a pass, or all users should keep right except a pass, would be to kind of just make eight be trail speed limit, um, uh, twelve miles per hour for uh, e-bikes. Yeah. yeah. Um. I. I would actually flip the wording of eight, to, e assist speed limit equals twelve mph. 
so that we are targeting who the user that we're trying to to talk to first. So that's that's my suggestion. All right, do we have a second on that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess we didn't officially vote on the other. Let's vote on both of, both of these together. Those changes, do those make sense? Um, and I'll do a roll call since we are hybrid. Um, James? So Carolyn, uh, yeah. should we go back and and maybe with this, uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to? to see if there's a vote to, to pass the motion or yeah um, I wanna, yeah and then and uh after that if it is passed should we go back and to fnt and and then draft the language send it back to you just for confirmation yeah that would be fine but it won't need to come back to the committee um so just for clarity so there's um a motion on the table to eliminate five and six and hear anybody uh can you hear me now? I can hear um, you fine. Okay. So motion on the table to eliminate five and six and alter eight to e-assist bikes, 12 MPH. Um, or, excuse me, uh, here's what I proposed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> e-assist okay. speed limit equals 12 MPH. Great, thank you. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do a roll call. James? Yes. Brett? Yes. Um, Freeman? Yes. Okay. Uh, Nick? Yes. Uh, Donna? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Freeman, are you there? Okay. He's having audio. Um, that passes despite his vote. <laughs> um, Let's see, is he sending me a chat? <laughs> um, whoops, I'm gonna stop share. I would like to thank Freeman, although we won't be able yes. to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Ka Carolyn, if we could minute our thanks to um, uh, FNT for their work on this, and maybe we could do that by um, whatever it is, unanimous consent. Um, <laughs> I think it would be appropriate to at least acknowledge that in our in our minutes. I will acknowledge that uh, your statement that we, as a group, we don't need to vote on that. <laughs> um, but thank you. Yes, I'll put that in. Um, uh, Marlon, I had I had lost the audio for a moment um, yeah. until Ben, uh, until Nick just made that comment uh, about the acknowledgement. <laughs> so, so was there anything? <laughs> thank you, Nick. <laughs> um, is there, did I miss Yes. <laughs> so the, the committee voted um, unanimously to support those modifications. And I can send you the text of the modifications. Terrific. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Sure. Um, okay, so I don't know, were there any other changes um, that anybody wanted to propose to that? Okay. Um, all right, great, thanks. Let's move along. I think the next agenda item is an update from a project update from Donna. Yep, good morning. Um, so at, for those who were at the last city council meeting, the mayor uh, asked council to authorize a $2 million bond for us so we can get our paving projects out for the year. And she did make an announcement of what we were gonna pave. So um, I spoke a little bit at that meeting and I just wanna talk a little bit this morning um, about the specifics of these projects. Um, and we're also gonna talk about this at the next TPC meeting, but I thought it would be good to just kind of do a, um, a preview of what we're going to talk about at TPC and uh, take any questions or comments from this group. Um, so we have a very ambitious uh, paving schedule and sidewalk reconstruction schedule for next year. Um, we, we had a difficult year this year just with um, a variety of disasters related to flooding. Um, so our plan is to get this bid out um, in January, we want to be first on the contractor's list, and that will help our money to go further. 
Um, you know, sometimes when you bid these projects in like July or August, the price goes up versus if you bid it in January. So this is very time sensitive. We have, you know, a window of opportunity that I would like to take. Um, so that's why the mayor um, went to council in December. Um, we're a little bit off cycle for capital purposes, but I think it it helps us to stretch our money further. And that's the, the idea given the backlog of work that we have. So I want to start by just kind of running through the list of all of the things we're going to do. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the complete streets ordinance and what I'm going to need from TPC uh, next week. So our plans are as follows. Uh, we're going to be repaving, and this is a mill and overlay contract. So this is not a reclaim project. Um, I, this is not you know, we're not doing uh, like massive uh, utility work. Um, you know, we're not sort of digging down, you know, two feet and changing water and sewer mains. This is just a, a mill and overlay project. So pretty basic paving. Um, so the Wolf Park roundabout, all of the approaches are in poor condition. So um, we're going to be milling around uh, that roundabout. Um, west of the roundabout is state layout that does not belong to the city. So we're just going to go to the to the limits of our jurisdiction there off the roundabout westbound. And then we're going to meet the work we did on Bridge Road uh, a couple of years ago and, and sort of um, just kind of marry those two road segments together um, and make one smooth surface there. Um, so the plan there is to put in uh, painted shared lane markings, uh, also called sharrows, and uh, to upgrade the crosswalk markings and crosswalk signs at that roundabout. Um, we're also going to finish Spring Street. Um, so we're going to, you may remember we did Spring Street, I think it was either 2018 or 2019. Um, so we want to finish up Spring Street from Meadow Street to Colonel Valley Lane. Um, and we're going to upgrade the curb ramps and um, sidewalk on the west side of that road. Um, and I will come back to this to talk a little bit about traffic calming measures. So let me just Thank run you. through my pavement list here quickly. Loudville Road, we just have like a couple hundred foot section of Loudville Road we need to do out by the city limits. Um, so we want to finish that up. Uh, North Elm Street, uh, which is an important connector street from Bridge Road all the way to Locust Street. So we're going to be reconstructing the sidewalk between the rail trail crossing to Locust Street um, and constructing curb ramps at a couple of locations. North Maple Street from Bridge Road to High Street and also doing uh, sidewalk repair and shared lane markings. Um, Chestnut Street from Bridge Road to High Street. We're going to be reconstructing the sidewalk, which is in terrible condition. Um, and has actually been a topic of discussion uh, at the Disability Commission. Um, and again, curb ramps and uh, um, making, uh, I'll, I'll come back to some traffic calming things that we're going to do there. Uh, Dana Street, which is a small dead end road off of uh, Locust Street, right across from Cooley Dickinson. Um, so this is more about having the contractor mobilized in the area. And we'd like to just kind of knock off Dana Street while we're in the area. Um, and it just sort of saves on mobilization costs. Um, and then Burt's Pit Road from Clement Street uh, headed eastbound. So it's about a 2,000 foot long section through there that's in poor condition. Um, and then uh, kind of a very impactful project that we'd like to do is um, in looking at the sidewalk inventory, um, North Main Street from Park Street all the way to the Look Park Roundabout. The sidewalk is in very poor condition, uh, 3,500 feet of sidewalk, and we intend to reconstruct that. So now I want to talk a little bit about uh, traffic calming in a few kind of high profile locations. Um, because we are going to be on Spring Street, we've had kind of an ongoing conversation about speeding there. Um, it is very difficult for us to slow traffic down without putting something in the middle of the road to slow traffic down. So we are proposing three speed humps on Spring Street, um, one by house number 145, one by house number 160, and one by house number 206. And that will be extremely impactful in uh, slowing traffic through that entire corridor. And that is 
um, because we don't have a map in front of us, um, I can just sort of describe where this is. Um, it's basically very close to the intersection with Meadow Street by the whole Florence Fields uh, complex. Um, so the idea behind this is we want people going very slowly all around that complex. So in that same vein, we're also going to move up Meadow Street and right by the uh, parking lot headed into Florence Fields off of Meadow Street, one speed hump by house number 157, one speed hump, hump by house number 123. So those are speed humps on either side of the crosswalk leading into the parking lot to Florence Fields. So basically that's the installation of five speed humps sort of ringing that entire complex um, that will wow. that will basically clean up, you know, your speeding problems in that entire corridor. It will be physically impossible uh, for people to be going more than you know twenty five miles an hour, which is you know our desired result. Um, so that is what our plan is, and that there will be you know we will be notifying um, the residents in the area. Um, who requested traffic calming measures, who, you know, showed up at a lot of CPC meetings and advocated for this. So um, the time has come for us to implement some changes, and this is what we're recommending. So uh, Chief Casper and I have signed a, a joint uh, uh, statement uh, on this recommendation, um, and that will be put forward as, as part of the documentation at the CPC meeting. Um, and we hope that the, the neighborhood will um, support what we're recommending. Um, so other uh, traffic calming uh, measures, Birch Pit Road, um, we have uh, fairly significant speeding problems on the section of Birch Pit Road um, the headed like towards the, um, the fields um, in, in the eastern part of Birch Pit Road, um, like east of the Clement Street Bridge. Um, so we are proposing three speed humps uh, through that corridor right before the curb. Mm -hmm. So 309, 278, and 254 Burt's Pit Road. And that'll slow people down uh, headed through that entire corridor. So um, we think that, you know, kind of the, the installation of these things in the street that you can't hit going more than 25 miles an hour, um, will sort of send a very loud and clear message about um, what we're trying to build and, and what we're trying to do. Um, so a couple of other comments. Um, the Complete Streets Ordinance was enacted in 2015, and it's, um, you know, it, it says a lot. Um, and one of the things, one of the many things that it says is that it sort of aspires to um, concrete sidewalks, and it also aspires to concrete, or it also aspires to those sidewalks on both sides of the road, um, depending on what zoning district you're in. So uh, what it does is it talks about, you know, if you're going to come through and pave a road, um, depending on geographically where you are in the city, you know, are you close to a school, are you close to a, a, a central business district, you know, whether in Florence or in downtown, um, and then it talks about what it requires at a local level for sidewalks, you know, what type of material and do they need to be on both sides of the street. So when we go through our backlog of paving, so I'll, I'll just mention we have 160 miles of roadway and we have very limited funds to work with. So we try to make as impactful projects as we possibly can we have to think about what this ordinance says relative to what we're able to do. And what the ordinance talks about is that if we are not able to produce concrete sidewalks and if we are not able to produce sidewalks on both sides of the road, the ordinance states that a affirmative vote of the TPC is needed in order to proceed with the project. So a couple of comments on that, you know, there's a big difference between mill and overlay and a reclaim. And the difference is, you know, six figures. Um, so what's difficult for us as we try to plan these projects is that, let's just say I have a road somewhere and I have a very short window of time to mill and overlay this before I lose control of it and we have to reclaim it, which makes the price tag go up significantly. 
So when we think about what do the sidewalks look like on this street, and you know, can I fit sidewalks on both sides? And how long might it take me to design sidewalks on both sides? And how much might that mm. cost? While we're sort of having that conversation, I have now lost my ability to know an overlay of this street. And now we're sort of, you know, the days have come off the calendar and now I'm kind of in this place where we're into a full reclaim. So we do need to realize like the condition of our streets is a very dynamic thing. And with each day that comes off the calendar, they're actually getting worse. And that's just the reality of the situation. So we have looked at, you know, the list of things that we want to do. We've looked at existing conditions and we have looked at the $2 million that we have. And we have tried to design a project that is going to have the greatest possible impact for the good of the city, given the funds that we have. But the project that we are proposing is not consistent with the local requirements of the complete streets ordinance. So for um, North Main Street, North Elm Street, North Maple Street, Chestnut Street, First Pit Road, and Dana Street, if you were to read that ordinance and interpret it by sort of letter of the ordinance, all of those places require sidewalks on, or some iteration of sidewalks on both sides of the road and or concrete sidewalks on both sides of the road. So it's some sort of mixture of all of those things. And so what I will be discussing at TPC is sort of a street by street conversation about what the challenges are around sidewalks on both sides of the street um as well as concrete and the price of that versus you know the the cost of putting in a bituminous compliant sidewalk so in every single one of these streets we are proposing sidewalk work there is a sidewalk there we are going to fix it we are going to make it compliant it's going to be beautiful when we're done but we are not it is not going to be either logistically or financially possible for us to completely comply with the complete streets ordinance. In a lot of places, we simply do not have right of way. We, we just don't have the space. So this would be like us banging on someone's door and saying, we are taking 25 feet of your front yard to put a sidewalk in. So that's you know obviously not a process that's um, inexpensive or um, easy. Um, you know, in a lot of these places, we have utility poles just lining the entire street. We have hydrants, we have catch basins, we have slopes of people's lawns. It's just not sort of topographically possible to put in a sidewalk. And I'll talk again a little bit more in detail about that at CPC. So uh, what I wanna stress in my comments this morning is that we are doing the absolute best we can to work with the lay of the land, what we have, how we have it. We are not going to pay the street and like leave the sidewalk in poor condition. We are going to go through and upgrade the sidewalk. Um, but we, we are not going to be able to add sidewalks where there are not any. Sometimes that's just not possible and it's sort of aspirational, but it's not reasonable given the funding that we have. You know, if I have $5 million a year, I can do anything. Um, but, but that's just not what we're working with. Um, so that's kind of a general overview of, of what we're proposing to do. And again, I'd like to get this project out in uh, January and have a contractor in the city. You know, if all goes well by the end of April, early May, I would like to be first on somebody's list. So I'm happy to take uh, comments or questions. Um, and I certainly invite everyone to come to CPC on Tuesday. Um, Donna, I have a question. Can you clarify for Birch Pit Road? There are no sidewalks now yeah. in that segment from Clement Street East to uh, for the paving project, correct? Yeah, that's and correct. And we looked very carefully at that. And that is not something we're going to be able to install at that time, at this time. So okay. we, we actually, yeah, we actually looked really carefully at that to try to see, you know, what side of the road could we go on? 
um, you know, do we have space? Do we have right away? What does the topography look like? And, and it is um, a very, very difficult, difficult stretch um, that, that's just not possible. Well, there's no sidewalk actually on in, for the Birds Pit Road for its entirety all the way back to the state right. hospital. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. So okay. yeah, I mean there's nothing, there's nothing to connect to, you know, that's why yeah. that's part of the problem too. Um, but you know, if it were easy, you know, if everything was, you know, nice and flat and we didn't have a drop-off and we didn't have utility pole conflicts and it, you know, we didn't have like a massive uh, grading problem or an erosion problem. You know, I think it's something we could have looked at, but it, there are so many challenges associated with that stretch. It, it's just not comfortable. Are you, or will there be uh, striped um, bike lanes um, for that segment? Yeah, for, I, I'll have a little bit more um, detail on that on Tuesday. And um, yeah, I don't think we have, I, I don't think I have right away there um, to do like a dedicated bike lane. So it would probably just be a shared, you know, it'd probably just be a shared lane uh, with a shoulder or, or, you know, some sort of whatever sort of shoulder we can fit in there. Okay, it would be good to look at um, uh, look at that and the and the widths, um, yeah. the lane widths. Right. Yeah, I mean, in all of these places, like we just in in most of them, and I'm pretty sure Birds Pit is the same way. You know, we just don't have the width to get like a, a dedicated five foot bike lane in. Um, but you know, what we'd like to do is you know strike everything at ten feet and then kind of get a shoulder in there um you know to the extent that we can so you get a nice narrow travel lane and then a little bit of space on the shoulder um but you know it's i, I mean we're not widening the road so um you gotta just kind of deal with the real estate you got okay thanks any other questions from committee members yeah. thank you donna for this um really uh thorough account it's so good to uh have the the benefit of your plan and perspective uh, before us to consider. Appreciate that. And um, uh, about the uh, the speed humps, I'm really glad to hear all those plans for Spring Street and Meadow Street and Birch Pit. And uh, um, as a cyclist, uh, I am uh, often very appreciative of both speed humps that uh, that they exist to slow the traffic down, and uh, if there is a uh, uh, a little gap of about two feet on the curb side so that the bicyclist can pass by without hitting a speed bump themselves. We're not trying to slow down the cyclists. We're trying to slow down the drive of the motor vehicles. And uh, just having that two feet at the edge makes such a difference. Uh, so I hope that uh, we can very uh, carefully check the design before it's installed uh, from the, the installers and make sure that they fully understand. We don't want the speed hump going um, all the way into uh, all the way to the curb. I'm sure they're you know they're already allowing a slope for drainage, but a little bit extra gap of about two feet is really really helpful. Uh, and regarding the the complete streets, um, I uh, I certainly um, appreciate the the uh, the physical difficulties and challenges and even impossibility of. Uh, of widening the uh, the right away, we have narrow rights away. You gave lots of good reasons for why we can't always uh, uh, add even one sidewalk on one side. Um, I do, I do hope that um, the timing issue that you claim th that you you pointed out, where uh, a mill and overlay is much cheaper, but there's a narrow window of time, and if if we exceed that, then we go to a reclaim, and it's much more expensive. Uh, can we partly ameliorate or maybe wholly ameliorate that problem by getting ahead of it so that uh, we're looking uh, two years ahead to where the low-hanging fruit is for projects that that might more easily be able to uh, accommodate a sidewalk or a bike lane or some other complete streets uh, uh, mandated or dictated or recommended change and not lose that mill and overlay window uh, if it's um, if that's if that's possible to do. And regarding the limited resources, it also seems, obviously the budget is the manifestation of our values and if our values are, are complete streets, uh, there 
I, I get what you say about you're doing your best to do the best for the city, but part of doing the best for the city, it, it seems, is uh, you know pushing the envelope as as much as we can, every chance we get to uh, uh, to make it easier and safer and more inviting to uh, do alternatives to driving. And maybe that's worth missing a street or two if those funds can reasonably go towards a great improvement on the other streets that we are able to uh, to reclaim to complete streets standards. So th there seems to me there's a balance there that uh, is is worth continuing to to discuss and uh, to to try to push that envelope. Thanks, Don. Yeah, all good comments, James. Uh, just regarding the um, speed hump design, so I'll just go back to your first comment. Um, so yeah, we we have to um, we have to leave space for drainage. Um, and we'll certainly look at that against the curb line. So we'll certainly look at that specification. What we do want to avoid is people shifting to the shoulder and yes. putting their wheel over there, um, right? And and trying to limit um, the impact to their car. So that's that's just something yeah. we have to be careful of. Um, but I I totally hear what you're saying. So um, but but there will be space. There will be space for drainage against the curb, but we do have to sort of strike that balance. Um, the, your your second comment, you know, the backlog of work that we have, the backlog of paving. I mean, there, we're not the only municipality that faces this challenge, right? And and you know, state funding is just insufficient to keep up with what we need to do. It's it's it, it's very difficult to get on top of, you know, to get to the other side of the curve here, you know, it's it, it's very, very difficult to kind of get to a place where we say, oh, well, you know, I can look four years down the road and like this street's going to need to be mill and overlaid, you know, like every single winter I have some street that just sort of blows up on us. And it's like, where did this even come from? Like, how did this even happen? You know, and and every single winter we have like three or four of these things. And it, it's very hard for us to get to the other side of it because we are, we're always chasing our tail. And every single, you know, they, they have seminars on this, they have classes on this, like how in the world do you ever get around the corner, you know, so that you can get in front of your tail. Um, and it, it's a, it, it's like it, an excellent concept. And if someone can figure that out, like I'm definitely all ears, you know, but it's, it's really hard for us to get sort of on the other side of our backlog of work. But I certainly hear you. It would be great if I could say, well, four years from now, you know, I'm going to pave this street and I should probably start, you know, like the process of sidewalks now or something. So I I hear you loud and clear. Um, you know, as for the last piece, you, you know, your comments about sort of the budget representing the city's values, you know, I encourage everyone when I give my budget presentation to come to council and advocate for more money for us for sidewalks. Um, you know, the the difficult position that I'm in is that we sort of have an obligation to maintain the roads and there is actually a cost to the city um, for roads in poor condition and people sue the city constantly. Um, for damage to their vehicles. And it puts us in a really difficult position where I have to route resources to try to stave off um, those things. Um, so, you know, I, I don't want to say like the answer is more funding, um, but, you know, I, it, it would be great um, to the extent that, you know, we could get more funding for sidewalk work or more funding for complete street style work. Um, it would allow me to sort of better balance those priorities. So I would just encourage anyone and everyone to submit public comment to that effect, because the more I have, the more I can spend. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I have to be very careful with what I'm doing. Thank you. Go ahead, Brad. Have to run. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Donna, both for uh, this really comprehensive and early on in the process uh, report. Um, I really appreciate you bringing that to this to this group. Um, I feel like that's 
That's not something that we were seeing years ago. And I really appreciate your work and your communication. Um, it goes a long way. I, I still can second James's idea for, you know, so all of these streets in our city, they're all going to need work at some point. <laughs> and, you know, thinking about some of the most important connections, sidewalks and whatnot, it does seem like we should still be getting ahead on planning those for whenever they come up next, even if we don't know if it's one year, four years or 10 years. I feel like I, I don't know your job. I trust you in general, but I would encourage you to look for those you know, key points, you know, uh, in this case, maybe it's, maybe it's North Maple Street, I don't know, but uh, wherever the sidewalks people are talking about, you know, can we use that information from the sidewalk inventory to start doing that work ahead of time? Um, I do totally appreciate that you inherited, and this is years ago now, still um, a very, very backlogged uh situation on our streets and you have been doing a great job of trying to catch us up and i i really appreciate that work so i, I it's not to say that i don't appreciate where you've taken us just trying to keep pushing it i don't think i have anything else other than to say that i am also still curious about you know i can't i can't help but wonder like what would not doing dana street cost and could that be put to a sidewalk and I, I always wonder, you know, Bird's Pit isn't isn't the best uh, um, example, but you know, if you build it, they will come. You know, how, how, what, you know, at what point do we say, oh, now it's time to start building sidewalk, or now it's time to put it on the other side of the street, or now it's time to put in the best kind of sidewalk that won't have to be replaced for so long. You know, at what point do we say that? And and that, that's a tough question. I don't know what the answer is, but I do ask the question, like it makes me wonder when we're doing a short street like Dana Street that goes, it's not a connector street, it's not a high priority street. I wonder, thanks. Yeah, and I mean, it's a legitimate comment. And so the what we have to wrestle with here, what the mayor has to wrestle with is there's, you know, 40 people who live on Dana Street. and the paving of Dana Street is very important to those 40 people. Is it more important for us to put a second sidewalk on another street? Or is it more important to do a mill and overlay on Dana Street, which we will lose to a reclaim and likely never do because it will be so expensive um, in order to put in a second sidewalk on a street that already has one? And those are the decisions that we grapple with on not even a daily basis, like actually an hourly basis. Um, and there's really no answer to the question. Uh, there's no yep. right answer and there's no wrong answer, right? And and that is that is our challenge. Thank you. Thanks. I think I, I would like to add, and then Elena, I see your hand up <laughs> waiting patiently. Um, I think that same question could be brought to bear about Bird's Pit Road. You know, where should we be focusing sidewalk resources um, when we have them? Um, is it in more of the suburban rural areas where there is less density of people walking? Or is it in more of the urban areas where we have, um, where there are lots of people um, that could benefit from a sidewalk because they don't have one already. You know, there's some streets that are closer. And so I think that's a point for just dis for discussion as well. Um, okay, Elena. Awesome, thanks so much. Um, thanks Donna for this. This is really great to see so far in the future. So echoing much of what James um, and Brent have already said. Um, a few comments here. Um, one is when I was part of the bike bicycle committee in Brookline, and I know I've said this time and time again at this meeting, um, we've DPW and the traffic engineers would literally roll out plans and their blueprints on the table and the bike committee would review them and say, oh, you know, 
to James's point, it'd be great if we had two feet for a cyclist to not have to go over the speed hump. Um, and we had some really fruitful conversations there um, on the street by street. So I really hope that this committee um, in the future, um, that sort of relationship between DPW and this committee could be fostered. Um, one comment around the space limitations and totally recognizing that I mean, I'm originally from Texas, so there's no lack of space. Um, but here in Massachusetts, it's a different story and it's a much older infrastructure that we're dealing with. Um, but it's not necessarily taking space away from property owners. It's just reimagining how that space that we already have is used. Um, so if we have a two way street that, you know, we're trying to narrow to slow traffic, but there's not enough room for a bike lane we should be asking ourselves, can that be a one-way street? Um, why are we continuing to prioritize car traffic when, um, you know, there is space, it's just how we prioritize the space that we have. Um, so that's just something to continue to think about as we are looking at these projects and not wanting to expand into private property, but also, you know, recognizing that there's curb cuts and Lots of other complications as it relates to utilities and things like that. Um, the other side, another point is um, something I've been reading about um, is Copenhagen's transformation and how they've really increased cycling in the city um, over there in Denmark. Um, and an interview with the mayor, um, a question was, you know, how, you know, why have you been spending all this money and prioritizing? And one thing that they said was they have a really limited budget for their streets. So very similar to Northampton. And they were looking at ways in which they can, you know, push that budget as far as it could go. And bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure was some of the most cost effective ways to do it. So again, just thinking of, you know, to James's point, how we're prioritizing the budget. Um, you know, it is the most economical to really think about how we do bike and ped versus car traffic. Um, another point around advocating for sidewalk and the budgets there, totally hear you. And, you know, I think myself and others on this call, but then, you know, we have a community of advocates um, that would be happy to show up to support you and the budget. Um, just let us know when, like, I, <laughs> I, I know many other people, um, you know, we have full-time jobs, a lot of people have kids, a lot of people have other commitments and we, you know, stay pretty up to speed on what's happening in the city, but we can't see it all. Um, so just sending us a quick note, we can definitely get the word out to bring people to those meetings, to speak to those budget um, needs, to support you, to enable to, you to do your work. Um, so we're more than happy to do that. We just need a heads up and, and we can activate on our end. Um, and then the last point, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention climate change. Um, I um, do climate change in my day job. Um, we're in a climate emergency and we continue to build infrastructure for fossil fuels. Um, and that in this case being car infrastructure and people will say we'll have electric vehicles, but that has its own slew of issues. And um, it's, let's just be clear, the electric car will not save the planet. It, it will save the car industry. Um, so I really, you know, you know, we're thinking four years down the road, maybe we'll get some sidewalks or maybe we'll get a bike lane. But unfortunately, we just don't have the time. Um, I think we will be seeing in COP this last two weeks, um, you know, countries are coming to a realization that they're going to be phasing out fossil fuels. And so um, that should be, you know, at the very local level, we should be thinking about ways in which we can do that. And in Massachusetts, um, you know, transportation um, accounts for majority of our CO2 emissions. I think it's like 58% of it or 52% of, or no, it's 42% of CO2 emissions come from car traffic. Of that, 52% um, or 58% comes from uh, individual vehicles. Um, so just again, we're in a climate emergency and we have to start building infrastructure that incentivizes people to drive less and walk and bike more. That's it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so we are a little bit after 10. Um, I think we're going to need to push off um, the other agenda items to the next meeting. Um, but I appreciate everybody coming today. And we've already lost James So um, and Nick. So um, 
If we could get a motion to adjourn, that would be great. I move to adjourn. Second? Second. Okay, thanks. Um, all right. And then that's uh, Brett. Yes. Freeman. Donna. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, great. Thank you all.